Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm super excited to be part of Justine Hoovey's Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. If you're unfamiliar with this hop, it's a really cool way for us to introduce you to a bunch of new designers. Maybe you'll find some new ones that you want to subscribe to. No good hop would be complete without prizes, and we've got over 50 prizes in the hop this time, which is pretty awesome. All you have to do to be entered to win is comment on different videos. You don't have to comment on them all, but the more times or the more videos you comment on, the more chances you have to win. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this fun little Father's Day barbecue box card. Of course, you could make it a birthday card too if you want, but I think it's a, a fun guy card and Father's Day's coming up, so I decided to make this one. The first thing that I'm gonna do is cut out my pieces. I'm starting with Lawn Fawn's scalloped box card die set. And if you're not familiar with this, it gives you a die that will cut the panels, and you're gonna need to cut two of them to make a box. So I'm just, uh, going to show you these two pieces here. I'm not going to make you watch me die cut everything, but I do want to show you after I cut out these two panels, I'm going to modify them just a little bit. Included in the die set are a pair of uh, stitched rectangle dies, and they're the right size to cut out little windows or decorative elements that you could layer on top of these panels, but I'm going to use them to cut little notches in the bottom to give our barbecue some feet. So I'm just stacking up both of the red panels. I'm gonna cut through both at the same time. And then I'm gonna line up the inside of the die with the bottom of the card pieces. And I'll tape them in place just so they don't shift around. And then I can run them through my Big Shot again. And we'll have little notches out of the bottom there. And then because most barbecues are not fancy with scalloped edges, I'm going to trim those away. So I'm just putting them in my trimmer and I'm lining up the top about a quarter of an inch from the blade and then I'll just cut those down. And I want to show you the die cut pieces. So I used uh, Lawn Fawn Scallop Box Die. It also comes with the support or strut pieces. I cut four of those from black cardstock. I used Mama Elephant's Flip Slider die, the, the large rectangle in there, to cut some more black rectangles and a wood green one. Then I pulled out uh, the scallop border set and I cut the smallest one. I thought this would make a nice tray for my shish kebab. For the sentiment, I'm going to die cut the word happy from this happy birthday die from Spellbinders. And I cut it twice from red cardstock. I just partially cut it so I wouldn't... Um, have the extra there. I'm using Heffy Doodle's smallest strip of ease to cut out two black rectangles. And then I'm going to use my nesting circle dies from We Are Memory Keepers. I cut a pair of silver one inch circles and a pair of three quarter inch black circles. And then this is a, a neat little die from um, the Frantic Stamper. Uh, they're little paper dolls and this particular die cuts out uh, some of the decorative elements, the hair and umbrella pieces, but if you cut them from silver they make nice burners and knobs. And then I also used my quarter inch hole punch to cut out a few more silver pieces as well. For stamp sets I'm going to use Lawn Fawn's Let's Barbecue and also the Plain and Simple has the Father's Day sentiment in there that I grabbed. And there's one more set but I didn't know that I was going to use it yet. I'll show you that in a second. So the next step is going to be to stamp our pieces. I'm going to take one of those little black strips and I'll line up my stamp that says Father's Day into my Misty. And then I'm going to prep the paper with an anti-static powder tool. I'll ink it up with Versamark ink. It's a clear and sticky ink if you're not familiar with it. And then I'm going to grab my white embossing powder. Notice that that is a drawer that's holding my embossing powder and I've got a white spoon. On the front of the drawer I labeled the the, I took the label off of the jar of white embossing powder and put it on there so I know what I was dealing with. And then I also did the same thing with the second drawer with my clear embossing powder. So that's a fun idea I picked up from Mary Polanco. And now this time I'm going to stamp the rest of my sentiment on the back of the barbecue. So I grabbed one of those red pieces and I put my stamp in place and I cut it in half. If you don't like 
cutting your stamps, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and um, mask it off and move it around. But then I'm going to stamp with VersaFine Claire ink in the Nocturne Black, and then I will um, add the clear, or yeah, clear embossing powder, clear spoon, clear embossing powder. <laughs> That's how I keep them keep them apart because they look awfully similar when they're in powder form. And then I can just melt this down with my heat tool again, and it gives me a nice raised shiny sentiment. So remember I said I had one more stamp set. I grabbed the R out of the Milo alphabet set there because I decided I wanted to turn that into a relish bottle and I thought an R would be fitting. You could always just write it in yourself or uh, use a different alphabet, whatever you want to do here. Um, I'm not going to make you watch me stamp everything out. Just know that I'm repeating the process. I'm stamping it with black ink and then embossing it with clear powder. And then I'm just filling it up. I want lots of little elements. If you do not want to watch me color, don't worry. Just skip ahead about one minute in this video. I am just going to speed through this real quick. I grabbed some Copic markers and I'm just going to lay some color down. I'm not worried too much about light sources or anything. There's there's, most of these elements are going to be on the barbecue with lots of flames around them, so you'd have a bunch of light sources. But I do want to use multiple colors just so that I get some color variation and some texture in there so that the images don't look so flat. And just just grab a few colors. I think I used almost every E marker that I had <laughs> just to, to give my various meats some different looks and then the bun as well. Now that bun I am gonna, that the hot dog in the bun I'm gonna put on that little silver tray. So I did kind of put a shadow there. And notice that when I'm coloring, when I have multiple images, I'm coloring all of the same image at the same time while I have the marker out. It's just easier than going, you know, one complete image then to the next and to the next. You'd be repeating yourself a lot. Um, and also notice that I left a lot of room around my stamps because I'm going to use the coordinating dies and they leave a white border. So you want to make sure that you have enough room. I even left a little more than I needed, but you want to leave enough room so that you're not accidentally cutting into the next image or the border for the next image if you get them too close together. And then I'll just run those through my Big Shot too until they're all cut out. And then I have one more modification to make to this box. There's a score line there, and we are just going to cut off the big top rectangle. Uh, that's the front of our barbecue, so we wouldn't need that. And then I'm going to gently fold on the score lines. I found that if I use my bone folder, the pieces don't want to pop back up as well. So if I just fold with my fingers, then I, the box will tend to pop back up into shape nicely. And when I'm folding the back piece, I'm, I've got a few different score lines there, but I'm going to make sure not to fold the big piece in half. And that's because that's the back of the card, and I want it to look like the lid is up. It's not a big deal if you do fold it down. Sometimes I accidentally forget and fold them, and it's not the end of the world. Um, especially for a barbecue, because there would be a hinge at the lid. And then I went ahead and I also folded over the tabs. And then I'm going to bring in my score tape here, and I'm just going to put um, a line of it on each tab. That makes it faster and easier to assemble the box. You can use wet, gl uh, wet glue as well, but the, the score tape requires no setup time. You don't have to pinch it in place for a long time. After I get those all done, I want to go ahead and decorate the front of the barbecue while it's still flat. So I'm going to grab one of those black strips, the other one that I didn't emboss the sentiment on, and I did trim it down to fit across the front with a, a narrow red border around it. And then I grabbed two of those black rectangles, and I'm going to glue them in place to look like the doors. And I like the wet glue for this because that gives me time to move them around. I'm just using PVA glue in a fine line bottle. And if you follow me, you saw my last video, I was uh, going over my changes to the, the different fine line bottles. There's a yellow tip, which has a slightly bigger gauge than the blue tip. And recently I switched from the uh, yellow to blue for my PVA glue, but I decided that I like it better with the yellow, so I switched back. 
Incidentally, that was fine because I also decided that I did not like the yellow tip for my diamond glaze, so I just swapped the two. Now, I do find that it's easier to use a jewel picker to pick up some of these small pieces, and it also helps you see to place them. Um, it keeps your fingers kind of out of the way. It gives you a little more room to see, but it's not always easy to hold on to it when you're applying the glue. So um, it's helpful, but you don't necessarily need it. And again, I'm using this PVA glue here for all, most of these decorative pieces here. It just, just gives me time to shift them around if I want to move them a little bit and get them perfectly lined up. And if you get any extra glue on the black or the red paper, it's no problem because it dries clear and matte. If you do get it on the silver mirror cardstock, you're going to want to wipe it off because otherwise it'll, it'll knock down some of the shine. And some of those little half circles, they seemed like they'd be perfect to go behind the knob. So I'm going to put one in the center first because I have a clear center. And then I'm going to put the left and right edges down. And then I can figure out the spacing for the two in the middle. I, I find it's easier, especially for something like this, if you want to keep them evenly spaced, that you, uh, I'm, I'm putting the center one down first, but a lot of times I'll just put left and right down first and then uh, fill in the gap in between. And so the next thing I want to do is build the burners that'll go on the side of my barbecue. So I grabbed the big silver circles the black circles and then those little embossed pieces and I'm just going to stack them up like this and add a few more knobs. I was thinking that I would put the knob in the center of the burner. It sort of made sense but then um, when I laid it out before I glued it down I decided to, to put the white piece sort of on top to see how much would get covered up and I decided that I would lose too much of the detail because I know I'm going to put that, that white piece on top to be my shish kebab tray. So I decided to shift the knobs over to the sides. And then I'm just going to quickly glue all of this stuff down. And it's just black silver, black silver. And I'll get my knob in place just the same way I did for the, the other knobs on the front of the barbecue. And I'll repeat the same thing for the other side. That picker really is helpful to push down on some of these small parts too. So I just did the same thing right here on the other side too. And then I don't want to stick those on yet. It's a little hard to uh, gauge the centers um, before I put the, the card together. So I'm going to put these pieces on the back real quick and then I'll put the card together. I decided I wanted the hot dog on that tray and then I want that and the relish bottle popped up on the back and that would be easy to do at the end as well um, especially since I'm using foam tape but I was doing it now while the box was still flat it was easy to work with so I went ahead and popped those in place and now we'll start to put the box together I'm gonna grab both pieces and I'm just going to line up those uh, two pieces there at the tab and I can peel back the release paper and then fold the tab on top of the other piece. And before I push too hard, I'm going to close it up and make sure that it is lined up where I want it. Notice that that tab kind of overlaps the notch that we had cut out. So I'll just trim that away with my scissors here and I'm being careful not to cut into the barbecue itself. And since it happened on the back, it'll happen on the front too. So I'm just going to trim that little bit away there too on the front piece. And now I can put the black struts in. I'm going to just put one side in place first. And I'm placing it about a quarter of an inch from the back. And I'm making sure that it's folding across horizontally across that little score line there. And then I'm going to place the front piece in there, about a quarter of an inch from the, the front of the card. And then for the two center pieces, I just want to kind of eyeball them and make sure that they are equal distance apart. And I'm only putting the, 
the one side down now. I'm leaving the release paper in place on the other pieces so that I can make sure that they're all even. And when I'm satisfied with that, I can go ahead and remove that release paper and I'll close up this side of the card. And it'll just grab all of them at the same time and ensure that it can lay down flat. Then I can peel up the piece on the other side here and close up the box. I could have done that at the same time with the other tabs, but I find when I have too many pieces that I'm trying to keep perfectly lined up, at least one thing will shift. So uh, I do that separately usually. Now it's starting to look like a barbecue, right? Okay, so now I want to put my sentiment together and make that one piece there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the two layers of happy together. And because I was partially die cutting, the edge of the Y is different on both of those. So after I glue these two pieces together, I'll just take my scissors and trim them up and round off that edge so it looks like the other side. And then I'm gonna grab that wood grain piece of paper and I will take my little black strip that I embossed and trim that down to fit on the wood grain. I want a little bit of a border around it. And then I can glue that in place. And I'm just gluing it flat down. And then I'll glue happy in place on top of that and I let the ends of the letters extend off the edges a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue down both of my burners and then I'm going to put my shish kebab together. Um, I just glued the first one down flat to the, the little white tray there and then for the second piece I put a little piece of foam tape on one end of the shish kebab and glue on the other end so that when I lay it down it looks like one is overlapping the other. Just gives you a little more dimension to the card. And then I'll put a piece of foam tape on the back so that I can attach it to my uh, side of the barbecue there. And then I'm just going to glue these two utensils down flat. You could put foam tape behind them if you want. I didn't want to fuss with the foam tape for these two. And then I decided the, the top of the barbecue was looking a little plain. So I wanted to add an extra little strip. And I've got a tip for you. If you want a really narrow strip and you don't have a, a big piece to cut it from, like this is just a tiny strip, it would flop all over the place if I was trying to cut it. So I used another piece of cardstock just to butt up against it and that held it in place in my trimmer. Then I cut it down and that's a little less than an eighth of an inch, just, just a little smidge of a strip of paper there for a decorative element. And I'll glue it to the top of the barbecue. And notice that my craft mat is taped down to a clipboard. That's another idea I got from Mary. She's full of great ideas. You should definitely check her out. Then I'm going to go ahead and pop my sentiment in place with a little bit of foam tape. And then it's time to add the meat. And I just kind of glued them in place. And then the flames are the last thing that we add. And some of them are glued flat and some of them I popped up with foam tape. That just gives each layer a little more dimension. So, for instance, that one has two pieces of foam tape. It's doubled up. Some of them have one, and some of them are, are glued flat. You just want to kind of spice it up there. And that last piece, it's always the hard one to decide where to put it, right? <laughs> so there we go. That finishes up our card. I think Dad's going to love it. If you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know I'm doing something right. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and click subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any new ones. I hope you will continue to hop along with us. The next YouTube video in the hop is the first link in the description right down below here. Remember there are over 50 prizes in the hop. All you have to do to be entered to win is to comment on different videos. And remember you don't have to comment on them all.
Uh, but we've got a lot of great prizes up for grabs, including three power pack kits. If you're not familiar with these, they are the fastest and easiest way to make light up cards. I've got a couple different videos using them also here on my channel. Oh, also all of the uh, winners um, have to comment by June 5th and they'll be announced on Justine's channel and her blog, which are linked down below on June 10th. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you here again in the future.